But for many believers, heavy metal remains inextricably tied to the devil, a kind of doorway or portal, like Ouija boards, witchcraft, or other occult practices that can invite the forces of darkness into a person's life. He shows me a chord progression called the tritone, also known as the devil's interval. The devil's tritone is made up of these three notes, and this note right here drops down one. So it goes. So listen to the difference. It just sounds evil, doesn't it? It sounds darker. Which is why the progression is used so frequently in death metal. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. This is so true back then, and it is true today. Today, I want to talk about, and I want us to investigate and read from the Word of God, what is worship and what is music and how they go together. It's origins, past and present. I want us to go on a journey on music and its influence from the 80s, 90s, and today. And we're also going to take a look at the Christian music industry. And is it all really Christian or is it exactly that? A business, an industry for self-profit, self-worship and self idolization So with that being said, what is worship and who is it for? We learn and we read about this in Revelation 7:11. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God. So what is worship exactly? Worship is to pay homage, to pay respect, to bow down, to be obedient to someone, specifically who, not just anybody, the throne, the throne of God is not for yourself or another a lesser being in revelation 5 8 it tells us how we worship and with what we worship it reads like this now when he had taken the scroll the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb each having a heart so now we find out that instruments are starting to be introduced in worship for the Lord, God himself. And in Revelation 14, verse two and three, it says this, and I heard the sound of the harpists playing their harps. They sang as it were a new song before the throne. So now we're starting to get into and introducing worship through song, a new song, incorporating instruments for God, the throne of God, Yahweh, Father God, not any other person, yourself, or lesser God. Now, with that being said, music is also intended by God to put us at ease from distress, anxiety, depression, evil thoughts. It's supposed, it's supposed to put us in a place of peace as long as it's directed towards him. It's a form of meditating on him and his word. And he's supposed to bring us peace. We see an example of this taking place in 1 Samuel 16, 23. And this is what it says. And whenever the tormenting spirit from God troubled Saul, David would play the harp. Then Saul would feel better and the tormenting spirit would go away. See, there's power in music. There's power in music both ways. There's power in music through God and worshiping God. And there's also a negative effect that has power over you through music and its influence and its worship unknowingly to you so it's clear that god created worship and music for his glory but did you know that there was a period of time in history when god made all the angels that there was one that rebelled 
there was one that was made a specific way and there was one that wanted to be just like God and it involved music and worship Lucifer also known as Satan and it reads this way thus says the Lord God you were the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty you were in Eden the garden of God every precious stone was your covering the sardis topaz and diamond beryl onyx and jasper sapphire turquoise and emerald with gold the workmanship of your trimbles and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created you were the anointed cherub who covers i established you you were on the holy mountain of god you walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created to iniquity was found in you so right now this is a description of lucifer and how he was made physically his purpose and we find out four things about him that led to his fall beauty wisdom position and the thirst or worship how do we know this once again if we go to the verse it talks about how beautiful he was how he was made perfect he was covered in every single beautiful stone so that was his beauty you know you see people they think that he's like red he's got a goatee and a pointy tail and stuff like that he doesn't he's very beautiful he's an angel and beauty brings attention secondly it said that he had wisdom knowing probably all heavenly things and then of course it says that he was anointed he was specifically known as the cherub who covers now the word anointing means to be set aside to be um to be made with purpose with reason to be set apart and it says that he was the cherub that covers and he had position position what type exactly he was on the holy mountain of god the same space that god's throne would be in probably covering and and magnifying and reflecting the glory of god to all the other angels and the congregation so being that close to god and being beautiful in nature and having knowledge started to build up his pride and then what a lot of people don't know is that he probably led worship and music he was probably made for that purpose to be in charge of the worship and the music but not for himself but for god yahweh and how do we know this? Because in the New King James and in the King James, and there is no mistake about these words and their original meaning. Now, every other translation and other theologians have debated about this to water down this meaning. But in the Texas, in the Texas Receptus, or the majority text of every single copy, every single manuscript, it reads this way trembles and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created a tremble is an instrument like a drum that has little rings and for its purpose is for its its music and pipes why would you have pipes coming out your body and trembles coming out your body because you were the conductor the maestro of the worship of god now he saw the power of worship. He saw the power of music, but it probably bothered him that it wasn't for him. He wanted all that for himself, but he had to do worship for God. Lead worship for someone besides himself. He had beauty, wisdom, 
position, but he wanted it all. He wanted worship. He wanted to be worshiped as God. How do we know this? We go to Isaiah 14, 13 through 14. And it says this, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. He wanted it all. He wanted to be worshiped as God. Wasn't enough that he was beautiful. Wasn't enough that he had wisdom and position and the closest to God, but he wanted to be like the most high. And when that happens, Proverbs 16, 18 says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Pride comes before the fall. So with that being said, we're going to look at 80s music, specifically 80s rock, the the big hair bands. But no one really paid attention back then at the message. And when you look at well-known bands like Journey, Kiss, Megadeth, Led Zeppelin, Motley Crue, Venom, and the Rolling Stones, just to name a few, many of them had occult symbolism on their albums, their lyrics. Most of them were flat out in your face, worshiping Satan. It has been said that the the effects of the 80s heavy metal era influenced the young generation to do many wrong and sinful things, including killings. Why? Because it put them in a state, an emotional state. The music had power to influence someone to commit murder. Her body might never have been found if one of them, Royce Casey, hadn't come forward. He said she was a blonde haired, blue eyed virgin, and they were offering her as a sacrifice to the devil. The boys were part of a death metal band and thought that Satan could make their music better. Casey said it was an idea they'd gotten from Altar of Sacrifice, a song by the heavy metal band Slayer. It had power to put you in a specific mood of depression. My experience being in the military and those being deployed at the time to Iraq and Afghanistan, they would listen to tracks I can't remember the name of the band, but the song was Let the Bodies Hit the Ground. But they had to set their mind, their way of thinking a specific way before they were going to battle. So it did something emotionally. It did something mentally to put someone in a state of anger and violence. Music slash worship is very toxic and powerful when applied the wrong way. And then you have the 90s. From what I remember, you had artists, if they're called artists truly, like Marilyn Manson. Open with what he believes without being vocal about it, but he would express it through his music. He would express it by looking completely evil and separate from everyone else, not wanting to look human, but look as dark as possible, as manipulated as possible. He would burn Bibles on stage on his concerts, and he had a huge emo following and a cult following, very dark music that made people feel very isolated, but yet understood the trap of the enemy. And then you got music today. Everywhere you look, every lyric, almost everything is not even hidden. It's, It's almost like every single artist is sold out for Satan. 
you hear it in the lyrics you hear it in the music it's there's the in the concerts in the awards there's just no hiding it why because the culture has been indoctrinated and it's a generation that has embraced and is ready to receive the beast the mark of the beast by saying it's a form of, of of expression. He does not exist, he's not real, but we like what he stands for, rebellion, against the status quo, the mascot. But it doesn't end or stop there. It has infiltrated the Christian music industry. And it's sad that that's what it is. That's what it's called, an industry, a business. It's not Christian music worship but it's a business and they have found out the enemy has taken advantage of church goers that don't have relationship with god and they have manipulated that and turned it into a self-worship money making business and then that's when you have people like toby mack lecrae triple e lauren daigle kirk franklin walking around with lipstick on his face and if you get offended by any of these artists, by me mentioning them, the fact that you get offended by me mentioning a man, but not getting offended because it's disrespectful to Jesus Christ, it means that our views are completely flipped over. They're completely turned upside down. Because I don't hear people standing up for Christ, but I hear people standing up for men men that they worship men that they idolize oh i like that song but is it christian worship and most of these artists if they don't show their symbolism and an allegiance to the occult to satan on their album covers then they will show it on their videos it's almost something that the devil has to do he has to show you before he executes so that you are without an excuse you saw it it was revealed nothing was hidden and you chose now what are your thoughts about that by all means i would like to know i hope you have been blessed by this study and by this video i would like to hear your comments leave them below and like always thank you for tuning in i'm out